Sometimes we begin a journey already knowing the destination, but sometimes it's better just to set off and leave everything else to chance. This trip began in Australia, and before it ended, it took me to some unexpected and unsettling places. It was a spiritual quest of sorts. I was looking for people who might have the answer, and I found them. Trouble was, not all of them seemed to know what the question was. After two summers among the neo-pagans and New Age mystics of the British Isles, this year I travelled further afield, not just to Australia, but to Iceland, Hawaii and California. They say that if you expect the unexpected, you'll never be shocked. But you know, that really isn't true. star children and rapidly awakening galactic humans everywhere on spaceship earth welcome once more to planet star child and our special galactic activation edition from every source of guidance and wisdom emanating from the brotherhood of ascended realms the long prophesied time for the stars to speak with the stones is here and now sounds reasonable enough Byron Bay, on the coast of New South Wales, attracts large numbers of mystics, gurus and New Agers. Self-styled cosmic messenger and planetary midwife, Robin B, knows why. It's the launching pad of the future. Like Glastonbury, it's on a ley line system. Where those lines connect, it creates a vortex of energy. acceleration of the frequency of the planet is spinning faster, actually losing quite a few hours a day. How can you distinguish the sensible from the non-sensible? Well, everything's perfect, you see. Everything's ah. already perfect. You're on Byron Bay time. What would you suggest I could seek for while I'm here? Well, I think it would be good for you to go and have a massage. Massage by didgeridoo is an extremely physical experience, even though you're never actually touched. As well as rearranging your molecules, it also calls up the sounds of the animals of the rainforest. The backwoods around Byron are home to hundreds of people experimenting with ritual, therapy and dress sense. This is a community with one foot in the past and one in the future. They belong to an ancient pagan tradition that they're still making up. Most of Byron's mystic community have come here from somewhere else. Darren the Didge Doctor is from New Zealand via Planet Bliss. Oh, thank you for that. What oh, an extraordinary feeling. It's pretty hot in here. <laughs> I've never experienced things in stereo with my body before. <laughs> it was like being warmed up from the inside yeah. rather than from the outside. Mm -hmm. Sort of like being spiritually microwaved, I suppose, or something. I'm, I'm all... Yeah. It's all happening in here. It goes right through you. Yeah. It does, doesn't it? And, and um, it's But it's the, the, the vibrations from the music, doing you? I've, I, I, I've never felt anything like that. Yeah, it's a pretty personal thing, too. Ooh. 
But, uh, I don't know, ever since I've started playing this instrument and, and thinking about the earth in a spiritual way, it's, my life has got a lot easier and better, as you can see. It sounded like you had all the, all the creatures of the forest in there playing as well, some of those sounds. I mean. Yeah, some of the creatures, I don't even know what they are, mate. <laughs> Aboriginal people told me I'd play a really confused song. <laughs> <laughs> New Age whites revere Aborigine tradition as ancient, spiritual and in touch with the earth. I'm hoping to get in touch with the earth myself in a ceremony for which I've been asked to bring my own shovel. Because tomorrow I'm being buried alive. <laughs> But before I can be buried, I have to be immersed. Because this is bath night. Angel bath night. Cool, listen to that thunder. I don't know, you can ride across to the other side of the world, hoping for a bit of sunshine, and look what happens. I've seen more promising looking skies in Coniston in February. By those rocks over there. Last year, a man was taken by a shark, apparently, a huge five or six metre shark. It just went and whoosh, swallowed him in one hit. And when they hunted the shark down afterwards, they attacked it and it regurgitated large parts of him. I've got to go in the sea over there quite soon. It's the full moon tonight and there's going to be a ritual in honour of the goddess. And we're going to get covered in parsley and honey and cinnamon and go into the water and immerse ourselves and give the goddess some champagne, weather permitting. Angel bless, bless the universe and all who are invigorated by your immense beauty and love. You whose womanly light illuminates, present us with a glow of beautiful heavenly light as we immerse ourselves seven times in a great homage to you and the angels. The champagne is a gift to the goddess and the parsley and the honey and the cinnamon are also for her. Wow, moon protection factor 15. <laughs> <laughs> so seven times, you say? Yes, yes. and a little drink for the goddess. A little like drink for the champagne. That's and right. Don't forget your coins. I have coins in my pocket. Yeah. I have champagne in my hand. Yeah. There are sharks in the ocean. Let's go. Okay. I was trying to get in touch with my higher self. But as I walked towards the water's edge, I felt like nothing so much as a bloke covered in honey, parsley and cinnamon walking towards an ocean full of sharks. I decided to play for time by asking pedantic questions. Seven times, you say? I'd read somewhere that honey repels sharks. Either that or it attracts them. One or the other, anyway. Angel bliss. Goddess bless. Amen. I know an Australian woman whose father was taken by a shark in knee-deep water, but I was trying not to think of that. And then suddenly I realised I was actually having fun, which I suspect was the main purpose of this not entirely unfrivolous goddess ritual. In just seven submersions, my embarrassment had been transformed to exhilaration. That's the power of water. Cheers to the gods of weather. To weather! There's a